The Panda Cam is back, and that's not the only national monument that's reopening. And Ohio State's making a move towards being the healthiest campus in the United States. Stay tuned. I'm Alice Bacani. And I'm Asia Gore. You're watching Buckeye News Now, your source for campus news. With just hours before the United States borrowing authority would expire, Senate leaders announced an agreement to fund the nation's debt limit through January 15th. This plan will lift the debt limit through February 7th, meaning that for now, the government shutdown is over. When we first spoke with students about the shutdown, many were confused about what the shutdown actually means. For many, there wasn't a significant effect. I just didn't know how it was going to affect things internationally because I know, like, especially since the U.S. dollar is a big uh, unit of currency worldwide, if we just, you know, defaulting, that'd be kind of a big deal nationally. And then how would other nations feel about us? But other students were more dramatically impacted. Relieved because I have a deadline. Um, I'm applying for the Peace Corps, and it was one of the programs that was shut down. And my deadline to submit my health information is Saturday. And <laughs> I couldn't submit it because the website was down. I'm very happy. Um, I know a lot of my family members, they are in the military, so they are real big with like their VA benefits. So, yeah, they probably can go back to work now. A former director of Ohio State University's Pediatric Cancer Radiation Program is pleading guilty to some serious charges. Alexandra Chapin investigates. Earlier this year, a criminal complaint was filed against a doctor that worked right here at Ohio State's James Cancer Hospital. And now he's agreed to plead guilty to a child pornography charge. 39-year-old Christopher Poloski, former director of Ohio State University's Pediatric Cancer Radiation Program, will plead guilty to accessing child pornography according to filings in a federal court. According to this affidavit obtained by Buckeye TV, the Franklin County Internet Crimes Against Children's Task Force was detecting online investigations and tracked illegal content to Pelosi's computer. The computer's IP address was tracked to Pelosi's residence in Upper Arlington. Pelosi's residence was served with a search warrant in July of this year. Multiple computers were recovered from the home, including a laptop belonging to The Ohio State University. And Pelosi admitted to detectives that he downloaded child pornography onto a university-owned computer. Pelosi was later arrested and put on house arrest where he remains. Documents filed in federal court last week say Pelosi will plead guilty to one count of accessing digital files intending to view child pornography. Pelosi could face up to 10 years in prison in a $250,000 fine. The Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center issued this statement back in July. These types of allegations are wholly inconsistent with our institutional values, and we are deeply disturbed to learn of the allegations against Christopher Pelosi. Upon learning of the investigation, we immediately severed Dr. Pelosi's access to all medical center facilities, patient records, email, and hospital computer networks. He has resigned from his position at the medical center, effective July 24, 2013. After Pelosi's guilty plea last week, a spokeswoman for the James declined to comment and said it was an ongoing judicial matter. According to the State Medical Board of Ohio, Pelosi's medical license is suspended while this case is pending. Reporting for Buckeye TV, I'm Alexandria Chapin. Republicans and Democrats crossed party lines and came together under one roof at Ohio State to discuss everything from bipartisan solutions to important issues affecting Ohio voters. Ritika Shah has the story. As a swing state, Ohio is usually caught in the midst of a tug of war between red and blue. But the Commission on Political Reform wants to take these guys and throw them out. They're looking through purple colored glasses to unite Americans and engage voters. A bipartisan town hall meeting to address voting issues in Ohio was held Tuesday at The Ohio State University. Panelists focused on dispelling partisanship and encouraging young people to take part in the political process. But we need young people to be willing to be part of the dialogue, to be willing to be part of the political process, because it's young people who are going to lead the way and get us out of this mess. Young people who are going to change this dialogue, run for office, and show us the way to, to heal. 
Former Governor Ted Strickland also emphasized the importance of students being passionate about civic engagement and striving to become citizens of the world. I think if they see um, th those uh, opportunities to have that kind of engagement, it will lead them to vote and to be actively engaged in the political process. Students have the opportunity to use social media and tweet at panelists with questions, but the discussion made students want to go beyond the 140 characters. And as a student, as a young person, I, I want to see as many people as possible registered and uh, involved in the, the political process. So coming here today and, and watching these uh, events, I, I feel uh, I want to take action. Undergraduate student government president Taylor Stepp said students at OSU are experiencing some of these issues firsthand. Uh, particularly when you have a lot of young people registering to vote, uh, voter registration, and uh, you know the idea of when are we going to early vote, when are we going to uh, open the polling places, how late can we allow early voting. These are all huge issues for college students, so it's, it's again really great that we're having this discussion here at Ohio State. Panelists use this platform to talk to Ohioans about problems that plague the swing state, including issues that USA Today detailed as preventing voter fraud, increasing voter access, and easing partisanship. We talked about a lot of difficult issues today. I'm not sure we came out with any specific answers to these large problems, but I think it's important to have this kind of dialogue. Reporting for Buckeye TV, I'm Rithika Shah. Would you sign up for another class right after finishing exams? What if it were free? The university announced earlier this week that a free May session class will be offered once again for May 2014. We're going to do what we did last year. So it will go forward with the same kind of planning that we did last year with the same kind of, of, uh, of assumptions, et cetera, for, for that. Um, same kind of financing scheme, everything. Because I think we don't have enough data from one year's run to tell us what that semester is going to actually look like. Um, and, and so we, we, are, um, we are planning to roll it out in May just like we did last year. And we'll continue to evaluate it and look at it. Coming together for the annual campus community luncheon, the Health and Wellness Address served up the initiative to eat healthier and live actively. We have a lot of room for opportunity. We sincerely do. 61% of our faculty and staff are overweight or obese, and about 25% reported that their total cholesterol levels are more than 200. So again, us monitoring outcomes of what we're doing is super important so we can see what's working and what isn't. When we come back, a new green initiative is blooming on campus. And it's homecoming week. Who will get the crown? Stay tuned. Business approaches come in all different forms. Ask any Fisher School of Business student and they can name a number of different theories. But it's an attention to culture and different worldviews that were the focus of one TED Talk speaker when he came to campus. Melissa Prax has the story. The Fisher College of Business at Ohio State, like many universities across the country, flourishes with international students. But the curriculum doesn't address cultural differences. Uh, what if all the management books were written by some other people than, you know, the Western civilization right now? And I believe there are lots of other uh, viewpoints to things like management, business, uh, etc. Which, if, if the rest of the world also looks at them and tries to understand them, it will eventually uh, make this world a better place. And on Monday, acclaimed author, speaker, and doctor, Devdutt Patanayak, came to talk about just that. Humans exchange. I give in order to receive. And this exchange creates trade. And from trade comes society. So in the Vedas, they keep saying, from yajna comes Sanskriti. And in Devda Padanayak's most recent book, The Business Sutra, he takes a look at the mythology behind business management, specifically in his own country, India. There's no knowledge out there. That is nothing. There's nothing that exists out there. It's all inside you. So all the teacher can do is give his digested material, share it with you, and hopefully you'll digest it and internalize it and make it your knowledge. Hindu Yuva plans on bringing more events like this in the future. Melissa Prax for Buckeye TV. 
After almost half a decade and $450,000, Ohio State's first public roof garden is putting down roots on top of Howlett Hall. The garden is now open to visitors, but it's not just for looks. The insulation provided by the rooftop garden is expected to save the building about $10,000 a year in heating and cooling expenses. It will also help prevent sewage water from entering the Olentangy River. Well, when they built the building in like 1967, originally the building was built for a greenhouse or a green roof or something to be out here so it had like the structural support that it needed for something like this but funding fell short and the and it got cut off the project at the end and so over the years different um, graduate programs or, or um, undergraduate students have done research in on green roofs but we were the first team to kind of take it to um, take it like where the rubber hit the road I guess is how, is how I want to say it Next, we're going to Dan Hope, who joins us from the Oval to see what students think about just one of the downfalls after the semester switch, the end of fall break. Dan? Having a break would be a great way to, you know, relax everybody after a stressful first half of the first semester, I guess. Many universities and colleges around the nation have a fall break, but Ohio State University is not one of them, at least not yet. In an interview with Lantern in August, OSU Provost Joseph Steinmetz and Vice Provost for Undergraduate Studies Wayne Carlson both told the publication if the university is considering adding a fall break as early as next school year. We asked students around campus what they thought about the potential addition. I'm all for it, as many breaks as we could possibly get. In particular, the break could be helpful to freshmen like Joel Sands, who are still getting used to campus in their first fall semester. It'd be great to have a, like a week off or a couple days off just to be able to relax and catch up on everything that I've done wrong and kind of, you know, get used to being at school a little more instead of doing constant work. While many students are in favor of a break, it's too little too late for some, like senior Josh Sinclair. Yeah, that'd be pretty awesome. Uh, I wish I had it because I'm going to graduate now, but yeah, I, I was kind of always curious why they never gave us a fall break. Many colleges and universities throughout Ohio, the Midwest, and the nation have fall breaks that consist of two or three days, a Monday and Tuesday before classes resume on a Wednesday. Schools that institute this type of fall break include the University of Cincinnati, Bowling Green State University, the University of Michigan, and Purdue University. For Buckeye TV, I'm Dan Hope. Parades and student royalty take over campus this week as students celebrate homecoming. Many different student organizations and groups across campus will compete for the best float in the homecoming parade. And the festivities continue with the pep rally and the crowning of the homecoming king and queen. Several campus streets will be closed on Friday from 5.30 to 7.30 for the parade, including parts of Cannon, Woody Hayes, College, and 12th Street. Coming up, Urban Meyer's Buckeyes are riding a win streak. Will it last? And we'll be back with your weekly weather forecast. Don't go away. We're joined now by our sports reporter, Jordan Elwood. Thanks for joining us, Jordan. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. It's homecoming week here at Ohio State, and considering that the Buckeyes are an outstanding 66, 19, and 5 in homecoming games, the University of Iowa will try to spoil the parade this Saturday at 3.30. The Buckeyes are set to host the University of Iowa this Saturday for the first time in three seasons. The Bucks and Hawks both share possibly the two best defenses in the Big Ten Conference. And according to Coach Meyer, don't expect the high potent Buckeye offense to have a walk in the park against the Hawkeyes. We got to find a way to win this Saturday and it's not easy. I mean, for, we've been in here for two weeks trying to figure out how to run the ball against this defense. And, you know, they're, they're top 10 in scoring defense or I think 12th and top 10 in rushing defense and very good players and all that. You know, playing a team like that, you make you want to play even harder, you know, just uh, you want to play to your amount that they, they got to reach to, you know, just play together as, you, as we're doing right now and um, make sure everybody don't miss no assignments. Well, the Buckeyes may not be number one in the polls, but they are number one in the country and in another stat. Dating back to last season, Ohio State holds the nation's longest winning streak with 18 straight victories. Buckeye fans expect the streak to continue to 25-0, but OSU must work on not feeling the pressure to win out each and every week. I really don't bring it up as much, you know. Um, you know, we just try to win every game as we can, you know, as this preparation and um, just win each and every game that comes upon us and take it one game at a time. I can feel sometimes pressure mounting on players when you streak, you start hearing about streaks, you start hearing about this, you start hearing about that. And, it's my job as a coach and our coaching staff is it's all about 
today. Looking down the road, Ohio State has finalized their football schedules for the 2018 and 2019 seasons. Looking at some notable games, the Buckeyes will play at TCU for the first time in program history and will host North Carolina for the first time since 1975. In 2019, OSU will make their first trip back to Northwestern since the 40-30 win just two weeks ago. And Wisconsin will come to Ohio Stadium for the first time since the previous meeting this season. The women's basketball team held their media day on Wednesday inside the Jerome Schottenstein Center. As you may know, new coach Kevin McGuff takes over for previous coach Jim Foster and also brings in a more up-tempo offense. The transition may have been challenging, but the Lady Bucks believe the hard work is paying off. It's been difficult because you have to learn different things and there's different expectations, but the new coaching staff has really been awesome with communicating what they expect and the team has done a great job meeting those expectations. Some of the pl like plays and some of the drills are the same, but they call them different words, so it's, di it's confusing learning his word and not going back and like on screens and stuff, but it's, it's getting easier each practice. They become more comfortable with kind of who I am as a coach and what we're doing offensively, defensively, and what we're emphasizing it will help some of our upperclassmen especially kind of fill that void of what it's going to take to be a great leader for this group. Now let's take a look at our weekly weather forecast. On Friday, we've got sunny skies with temperatures in the mid-60s. Heading into the weekend, temperatures start to drop with temperatures in the mid-50s and rain on Saturday. And on Sunday, sunny skies return with temperatures still in the 50s. On Monday, we'll start the week off with partly sunny skies and temperatures in the mid-60s. That's all we have for today. Be sure to turn in, tune in for next week's episode. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Thanks for watching.